I like Stevenage because I've got a nice school and the teacher's right and I live quite near the shops. It's a good place for playing football and you can do a lot here. I like the shops and you don't have to cross the road to get to another shop. Well, we came down from London to Stevenage about six years ago. I moved back all the tea in China. I think it's a great life. <laughs> In 1945 was this extraordinary period. We'd had the blitz and immense bomb damage to many of our cities. And then you also had the legacy of the 20s and 30s, which was a legacy of overcrowding, of really poor housing conditions, but also a new understanding about how that impacted on people's health and on children's health. So in 1945, a Labour government comes to power, drawing on all of the fantastic heritage of the garden cities and lays down the 1946 New Towns Act and it provided a visionary way forward for housing people from these cities and giving them an amazing quality of life. For my parents the choice was between a three bedroom house here in Stevenage which my dad got because he had a job working for a company that was here or the only property they could have afforded in London was a bed sit. To be able to come here and have a three bedroom house right from the start of their married life was a huge plus for them. We were amongst the early Newtown residents and I, I still think of my mum and dad as pioneers and talking to lots of their contemporaries. They felt like pioneers because there wasn't the transport or the communications links that we have now. Because it was all new, because there was nothing here in terms of community infrastructure, they built that and made it and made it what they wanted it to be. Compared to today, the speed of delivery in the new towns was quite astonishing. It would be a matter of months between a new town being designated and a master plan being drawn up and, and actually getting diggers in the ground. Stevenage has been planned with large buildings in the centre. Estates grouped round this and with existing woodland preserved wherever possible. Between the different neighbourhoods is a well-planned road system with cycleways and pedestrian walks. In the summer we usually ride everywhere, so if we wanted to go to, to the cinema we'd ride there. You could just ride there without crossing any roads, so it's a really, really safe way of travelling. One of the things that we do suffer from in new towns is that because they were all built within a very short period of time, it's all deteriorating at the same time, so we have to address those infrastructure deficit issues. And I don't think when they built the new towns people had really thought that through properly. The development process creates a lot of value and usually that value goes to landowners and developers but learning from the Garden City movement, if that value is, is captured and, and reinvested in the town itself it means that it's possible to pay for the upkeep of fantastic community facilities. When the development corporation was wound up back in the 1980s Unfortunately, all the assets of our town centre, apart from the public realm, were all handed over to private investors and that's meant we've had very little control over what's happened with the buildings in our town centre. It would have made it much easier to keep the town centre as a sustainable, vibrant hub that we all want to see if the council had been able to have more control over that on behalf of people in Stevenage. The idea of, of long-term stewardship and reinvesting assets for the long-term benefit of the community isn't just a, a pie-in-the-sky utopian ideal. If you reinvest those assets for the benefit of the community, you can really look after places and create quality places in the long term. One of the great things that surprises people who haven't been to Stevenage before is how green it is. Um, people are always taken aback by that. We've got about, I think it's about 80,000 trees uh, in Stevenage at the last count. Um, and I think that's part of the quality of life that people have got used to here and it makes life better here. So I think we have to be custodians of that uh, and make sure that as we plan new areas of Stevenage that we, uh, we meet those space standards and, and the quality of housing is important too. Today we're facing many of the challenges that Ebenezer Howard and Lewis Silkin faced in terms of dealing with chronic overcrowding and um, a chronic housing crisis and the need to build new homes. But today we're also dealing with the impacts of climate change and issues such as obesity. Um, one of the benefits of taking a new town approach is that you can think holistically about the kind of places we want to create.
I think the big lesson is sustainable living planned in from the start. So looking at uh, a neighbourhood and what will work, what will make a community work. Good quality housing that takes account of new needs for being energy friendly, ecologically friendly and that you're, you've got internal transport arrangements that can support that type of living as well. And, you know, give people a good quality of life. So I think that vision of that post-war Labour government to create these new towns was a wonderful vision. Mm -hmm.